Hi everyone, this video is about the mean value theorem. First, I'm going to state the theorem and give its geometrical interpretations. Uh, after that, I'm going to solve two related examples. Now, let's start by giving the statement of the theorem first. Suppose y equals f of x is a function such that it is continuous on the closed interval a, b. It is differentiable on the open interval a, b. Then, the theorem says that there exists at least one point C in the open interval AB such that the derivative of F at that point C is equal to the number on the right hand side appearing here. Now let us try to understand what the number on the right hand side is calculating for us. Let's pass to the graph here. From the point uh, A to B, I'm going to draw a picture satisfying, that is able to satisfy these two conditions, it's going to be continuous and differentiable. For example, let's draw such a curve here. It is quite a nice one. And the quantity on the right hand side is going to be actually the numerator is f of b minus f of a and the denominator of this expression is b minus a. Of course, the quantity right hand side, f of b minus f of a divided to b minus a, is the slope of the second line passing through the points a and b. The quantity on the right hand side, f of b minus f of a divided to b minus a, is the slope of this line. Therefore, the theorem says that if the conditions of the theorem are satisfied, then in the domain of, in the interior of the domain of F, there is a point C, there is a point C for which the derivative of that point, the derivative F, F at that point is equal to F of B minus F of A divided to B minus A. In, a, in geometrical terms, the slope of this tangent line is equal to the second line joining the endpoints A and P, A and B here. This is the geometrical interpretation. Of course, in this picture, uh, it is apparently seen that there is only one possible value of C, but the theorem says that there is only, that exists, sorry, at least one such point C. It doesn't say that there may not be more than one. Let's draw another possible picture F satisfying these conditions. This is quite like a differentiable and continuous curve. There are, for example, consider this point C1 and C2 here. If you draw a tangent line from here, you see that it is parallel to the line joining the points A and B. This is one possible candidate for the result of the theorem. And there is another point for which the tangent line is again parallel to the line uh, joining the points A and B. Therefore, don't uh, forget that you may, you may have more than one point C given to you by the theorem. Therefore, uh, let us put some remarks here. If we have f of A is equal to f of B, then Actually, we do have some more conditions here. Remember the conditions of the Rolle's theorem. We have continuity on the closed interval AB, differentiability on the interval interior AB. If we furthermore have f of A is equal to f of B, these are nothing but the conditions of the Rolle's theorem. Let's raise this part. In the special case, f of B becomes equal to f of A, giving you zero and you get the result of the uh, Rolle's theorem, which means in this case, when f of a is equal to f of b, you obtain Rolle's theorem as a special case of the mean value theorem. Don't forget that if, the, if these two conditions are not satisfied, uh, this theorem does not apply, you may have such a point C or you may not have such a point C. The theorem is not going to tell you anything if the conditions are not satisfied. Now an example which we are going to solve using the mean value theorem. The question is, show that this inequality is true for x is belonging to this interval. 
Well, I'm going to show, uh, I'm going to solve this using mean value theorem. First, let us say that f of x be equal to tangent of x. This is my definition. This is the thing I'm putting in the solution. And consider the interval zero b where b is in this open interval. Therefore, please see that I'm considering such an interval, zero b. Since b is not equal to zero, this is indeed an interval. Since b is not equal to pi over two, that right endpoint is not touching the point pi over two. b is never equal to pi over two. Please keep this in mind. Now my question, can I apply mean value theorem to the function tangent of x on the interval zero b? I'm going to check the conditions here. I'm drawing the interval zero b again here. Please keep in mind that b is not touching pi over two. There are two conditions. Is f continuous on the closed interval zero b? Is f is differentiable on the, inter on the uh, open interval zero b? f tangent of x sine x divided to cosine of x. This can be continuous, discontinuous if cosine x is zero. Cosine x is zero if around this interval if x is equal to pi over two. Please keep in mind that b never is touching pi over two. Therefore, cosine x is, x is never pi over two and cosine x is never zero. Therefore, over that interval, the denominator never becomes zero and the function is continuous on the interval zero b. Regarding the differentiability, the derivative of the function over the interval zero b, I'm checking this condition. The derivative of tangent being equal to second square x, in other words, one over cosine square x. This derivative may not exist if that denominator becomes zero. X is never pi over two, which means this denominator is never equal to zero. Therefore, this derivative is existing for every number x belonging to the open interval zero b. That means f is differentiable on the open interval zero b. There were two conditions, they, were both, they are both satisfied. F is satisfying the hypothesis of the mean value theorem on this interval I'm defining. Very good. Now, the result is that there is at least one point C in the open interval zero B such that F prime at C is equal to this number. I'm going to evaluate everything here for the function F tangent of X I defined there. So F prime at C, what is it? F prime at C second square C or in other terms, one over cosine square C. F of B minus F of zero, tangent of B minus tangent of zero. That's, of course, equal to zero. So I get tangent of b divided to b equal to one over cosine square c. Here, I need to have some information about the number in, uh, in the denominator here, cosine square c. You know that cosine square c is always uh, greater than zero, greater than or equal to zero, and less or less than or equal to one. My claim is that cosine square c is never equal to one because c, it's a number between zero and b never equal to zero. C is never equal to zero. Therefore, you never get cosine square zero here. Therefore, cosine square zero is never equal to one. Therefore, that quantity is always greater than, uh, sorry, less than one, which means one over cosine square C is reciprocal is always greater than one. Pay attention to this expression and the expression at the end giving you tangent of b is greater than b by multiplying the both sides by b greater than zero. After that, you replace b with x and you get tangent of x is greater than x, which is exactly the inequality you are trying to prove or show. That's the end of the solution. Now, the next question we are going to solve using the mean value theorem. The uh, statement of the question is as follows. Let f of x be a differentiable function for every x in the real numbers. If the derivative of f at every number x is not greater than five, and if the image of f at one is defined as two, find the maximum value f can assume at the point four. Now, before passing to this, uh, application of the mean value theorem, I'm going to extract some information from the statement of the theorem. It says, f of, let f of x be differentiable at every number x, which means if f is differentiable, then 
it is continuous on R. This is the first information I have from the statement of the question. Now, consider, I'm going to say, let's consider the interval one, four, the question, where does this interval comes from, come from? That one is coming from the definition of the function at one, and we are asked the value of the function can assume at the point four. That's the reason I'm interested in this interval. If we pass to the next part, I'm going to check the conditions of the mean value theorem uh, on the interval one, four. Since f is continuous everywhere, as I obtain the information there, it is also continuous on the closed interval one, four. Since it is differentiable everywhere, it is also differentiable on the open interval one, four. Therefore, by the mean value theorem, there is at least one point C, not in the closed interval, but in the open interval one, four, such that the derivative of f at C is equal to f of four minus f of one divided to four minus one. That's the result of the mean value theorem. And I have the information about this number f of one, that's equal to two. And I have another information that the function's derivative Remember this, please. F prime at x is always greater, le uh, less than or equal to five. So this is true also for x equals c, which means this quantity is greater than or equal to five. No, the other way around, it's less than or equal to five. Right? This makes f of four minus two is uh, less than or equal to three times five, giving you the maximum possible value of f of four as 17, the number on the right hand side. Okay, this is the maximum possible value of f of four obtained or restricted by the conditions of the mean value theorem. Uh, 